Hi everyone, it's Abby from Abby Road Creations and today I'm going to show you guys how to take one of these obsidian carved moons and turn it from this into this. Alright, so let's get started. For this tutorial, you will need, of course, an obsidian carved moon or something similar to this. You will need a 15 inch piece of 20 gauge wire or 0.8 millimeter wire. I use dead soft wires. This is in silver. You can use copper, brass, or plated wires, anything that you want. I would just stay away from stainless steel or hard wires, okay? So you'll also need some weaving wire. This is a 26 gauge or 0.4 millimeter. You could also use 28 gauge. We're gonna be using this to attach some of the wires and the design to make it really secure. That's on the front and the back. And then I also use it to attach the bead to the design. So that's all we're gonna be using it for. I'd say maybe eight inches is good. You really don't need that much, okay? All right, to add a little flair to our design, I will be adding some cute little star charms and some little glass beads to it. This part is optional. You could also just do a plain moon like this, okay? So for your tools, I have my wire cutters. These are flush edge, which means that that's a flat edge right there. Round nose pliers and some chain nose pliers. All right, so once you have all your tools, meet me back here and we'll get started. So for this design, the first part that we'll be working on is this swirl right here at the bottom. And then we will wrap everything and work from the bottom up, okay? So let's go ahead and grab that 15 inch piece of 20 gauge wire. And we are going to start with what is called the flush edge, which just means that instead of this pointy edge right here, I'm just going to clip a teeny tiny bit off to give it a clean finish, okay? If you don't have flush edge wire cutters, don't worry about it. Go ahead and do this tutorial, but they are a good investment for the future, okay? So let's grab those round nose pliers. And we are just going to work on a little swirl for the bottom. Okay, so I just like to work a little by a little to help keep it controlled and to get the exact roundness and swirly shape that I want. If you are working with a plated wire, keep in mind sometimes plated wires, they have different hardness. They can kind of be a bit wonky. So if your swirl isn't looking exactly as you want it to in the beginning, just clip it off and start over, okay? So I'm gonna test this out because each one of these crystals is unique in shape and size, which means that my swirl and my design will have to be adjusted to fit it every time that I remake it. All right, I think that is gonna look good. So if you want to add the beaded fringe to your design, this first step is really important because we want the beaded fringe to line up with the middle of the pendant, which means that this swirl needs to be wrapped around the center of the moon. Okay, so now let me try to explain what I mean by all of that. We're gonna line this swirl up and we think it looks good. And then we're going to kind of imagine a line running down from the top to the bottom. And that is where we're going to wrap the wire around the moon. Now, because these are kind of three dimensional, it can be a bit hard to pinch and hold everything on. So just do your best. You can struggle with me, it's all good. So once you have chosen that spot, we're just gonna kind of push the wire back against the moon. Okay, let's see if I can move my fingers away. So we have it pretty much in the middle. Now you don't wanna to pull too tight right here. We're gonna leave a little bit of space. That way we'll have room for the little fringe danglies to swing around right here, okay? Like you can see here, it's 
folded around, but it's not wrapped around too tightly on my moon. All right, so the fun begins. We are going to, I like to shift hands. <laughs> Here we go, give you guys a good look. So I am pinching this and this wire as much as I can to kind of control it, keep it in place as I use my other hand to start wrapping the wire around the moon. Okay, so here we are just going to doing one simple wrap around and then we'll come back up here to add the beads. To this one, we are going to push it down so that it lines up right next to that swirl. Okay. Pinching, holding on as best as you can. Okay, we're gonna wrap it around. Back to the front. Okay, let's see if I can give you guys a good look of everything. The concept of it is pretty easy, but the execution can be a bit hard just because these obsidian moons do have like a very unique surface. They're really bumpy and they're also very slick because obsidian is technically volcanic glass. So give yourself lots of patience to do this, especially if it's your first time working with these crystals. All right, so the next one we're gonna do we are gonna try and create a nice smooth curve right here and we're gonna add some beads on to this next wire part. So as you can see, all of this wants to move. That's gonna stay that way. We'll probably go back in and adjust some things before we finish off with the pendant. But for now, I just want to work on trying to get some type of smooth curve just to give the design a bit more elegant so it's not just straight wires wrapping across it. So in order to do that, you guys can see that I'm rubbing my thumb against the wire to try and create some type of movement in it, some type of curl. Okay. Okay. Taking my time, just like you should be too. And then once we get something that we like, you're going to grab those teeny tiny beads. I'm actually just gonna set this down because we are working with a long wire, which can be another frustrating point, but it is a good learning experience for you guys. So these are two two millimeter and one three millimeter beads, which is my favorite combination. Okay. Slide everything back into place. Position it like we want it. So here is a little trick. Because this curve here, you see it needs to go up really high. We need to make sure that we kind of bend the wire like that, just to give the illusion of this curve right here. Because sometimes once we pull it and wrap it around, it loses the curve and it becomes a straight line, kind of like how this first one did. So that's just a little trick of the trade, is curving it and then kind of creating an angle to wrap it around. That way we don't get too high up on the stone too quickly. And we kind of keep that little curve. So once again, wrapping it around the best you can, putting your hands in really weird positions to try and hold all these wires. Our next step is this little loop-de-loop -loop right here. So again, I like to use my thumb to create the curls. Maybe you like to use another finger, but we do need to kind of guide it into getting a nice little smooth curve shape. And then just using our hands, simply shape the wire into a little loop, just like that. Again, curving the wire up, just to give it a bit more flow to the wire. 
Okay, the wire is pointed up. So I'm just gonna kind of bend that back down to keep the illusion that the wire is going up while keeping everything kind of in place. So this next part, we're going to skip that because that's the very end and we're going to go to this part right here, but we'll move on to making the bell and then wrapping everything back around to finish. So you should have something that looks a bit like this right now. Back is very clean and simple for the moment. We're going to bend this wire up here. We are doing that first line that's on the left right here. And again, I like to curve it a little bit the best I can. And this is where we want to keep with that imaginary line that's running down the center of the stone. This is going to eventually be the little bell chain loop. So just kind of make sure that you are right in the good position for it to create a line through the center of your stone. Once you're there, we are going to create the little loop. So I am pinching with my left hand just to kind of keep everything in place as I create a little loop with my fingers. If you prefer to use your round nose pliers during this, maybe your wire is a bit wonky at this point, that's all right. To use your round nose pliers, just stick them in there and gently use it to shape the loop, okay? Don't pinch too hard, because remember that can create a soft spot, a little dent on the top of your wire, and we don't want that. So once you have the shape of the loop that you'd like, we are going to continue by just wrapping it around the back and up here. So, what I like to do is either pinch it with my fingers or with the chain nose pliers. This, this just helps to keep that loop the same size because what's gonna happen is if we pull this wire without holding this, we risk to kind of deform our little loop right here. So we're just going to hold on to it as we get a basic shape for this next part. And then we can kind of let go and guide the wire. So you can see it just wraps around the back. We're gonna wrap one more time on the front right here. And this is where we're gonna get a little creative with the design. So after we wrapped it around the front, I noticed that this space right here, it looked really empty. So it needed a little swirl right there, but because the wire is already on the opposite side of the pendant, we have to come up with a way to bring it back around. And also we need a way to kind of lock this wire into place. So to kill two birds with one stone, we are just going to pull that wire down to this wire part right here. We're gonna create a bend attach it with some weaving wire and then that way the wire's in the right place and we can just kind of bend it over do a loop-de-loop. -loop. So to put those words into action let me show you what we're going to do. So right now you should have this last little line right here finished. Your wire should be on the top. You are simply just going to pull that wire I would pull it pretty tight because we want this to be secure right here. And pull it tight until you find that intersection, that intersecting point right here. Once you find that point, you're just going to keep an eye on it and kind of put your pliers near that point. Sorry, I'm at a weird angle right here. <laughs> so that we can bend this wire back up. So to show you from a different angle, that is pretty much the intersecting point. And I am just gonna pull that wire 
right back up. So now we have a way to add the weaving wire to keep this secured while positioning the wire at the exact spot that we want to add a little swirly decoration. So let's go ahead and grab our weaving wire. I just have a little piece cut off here. It's maybe like two or three inches. Just enough for us to work with to secure this part. Okay. So one thing I forgot to mention at the beginning of the video that's handy to have when working with this type of a material that's very doesn't that's not quite flat. Um, toothpicks are a wonderful way to help you with weaving wires because you can kind of just slip it right in there and then you're creating leverage so that you can very easily slip your weaving wire underneath the wire. Okay, and you can remove it if it gets in your nerves, but this way it really saves you from going crazy trying to stick a very thin and flexible wire and trying to wrap it around another one whenever you have an uneven surface, a surface especially. So we have our weaving wire. We are just going to secure it and wrap it around this horizontal wire a few times, let's say about three times. Okay, so wrapping it around a single wire at the beginning helps us create a very secure base so that the wire won't come undone. So now this part, I'm going to wrap it around both of these wires, okay? okay? We'll also do this maybe two to three times. All right, and then we are just going to leave this for now. Whenever I'm creating and working with weaving wires, I usually leave them until I am very sure that I don't need them anymore because we may need to use this wire to attach this to if this is feeling a bit loose. So I just like to work at it one step at a time and see when I need to use them before I completely cut them off. But now that this is attached, we are going to go back to finishing our swirly design. So I'm just going to hold that with my index finger to kind of keep everything in line as I pull this wire down. Okay. Still using my thumb to just kind of keep everything in line. And I'm going to use my other thumb to help create the swirl. Just gently create the curve in the wire. I do feel like it's a bit trickier to create swirls from this direction. Just like without starting with the point, I do feel like it's harder to get a really smooth curved shape. But we just need to practice more maybe. <laughs> so I am just holding that with my thumbnail while I turn this to help and try and get an even swirl to it. Then once I have the size that I like, I'm just gonna get in there with my wire cutters and clip it off. Okay. Now if you want, if you wanna adjust this a bit afterwards, you can take your Rama's pliers to get in there and to make it like just the way you want it. After that, it is a good idea to kind of push that down because often that little part will be standing up and it'll be very sharp and pokey. So we'll just want to kind of push it in a little bit. All right. So our design is looking pretty, but it's not quite secure yet. 
So now is where we're gonna go and try to see where the loose parts are and secure everything there. So that's feeling okay for now, but I do want to use the rest of this weaving wire to attach it to here just to give it a little extra bit of security. So just like we did before, if I need to, I can take my toothpick Gonna create some leverage in there. Then I'll start to wrap this around. Okay, always looking back at the front to make sure whenever we pull, we don't pull anything out of the out of the design, out of line. And I'm gonna wrap that around about two times. Feel free to use your pliers at this point because these wires can become very hard to hold on to. And I'm gonna finish on this same wire that we started on. And in the case that the weaving wire that you started with isn't quite long enough, you can always add more, okay? It's better to add more weaving wire than to have a design that is a bit flimsy and not secure. Oops. Okay, and I'm also going to finish with three little wraps around like that. And we are going to try our best to clip this off so that that sharp edge will be kind of hidden so it won't have any risk of it getting snagged on somebody's clothing. That's why I really love these wire cutters. They cost a pretty penny, but they make my life so much easier. They can really get into these teeny tiny tight places. All right, and as always, we just wanna kind of pinch everything in to make sure that those little sharp edges are gonna stay put. All right, so let's test this out. Let's hope that it's gonna Yes, that is feeling a bit more secure. Another option here is that if you want, you can add a piece of weaving wire right here to attach that swirl and the little loop together if that's feeling like a bit unsecure or not very pressed up against the stone in your design. You really have to treat each and every one of these individually because of the shape of the stone may be totally different. So you may need to secure it in places that I don't, okay? And vice versa. So the next part, we are gonna add on the decorations. So if you are not gonna do the little fringe that I have here, you can go ahead and add a piece of weaving wire right here, as you can see I did and then your pendant will be done. But if you want to add the friend, we're gonna wait on that step to make our life easier. And we're gonna be able to slide some of the friend onto the loop like that instead of having to get in here with our pliers and try to create little loops that way. So let's get to the friend making part. So what I used in mine, just some little scrap chains, these teeny tiny jump rings, I think these are about four millimeter. Um, I have these cute little star charms. And then I have this bead where I wrapped like a weaving wire around it. I think that's a 26 gauge. And then that's it. So we are just going to put something together like this and to put everything onto our pendant. So for our chain, I'm just going to cut a few links off. Um, yeah, the most time consuming part is probably just finding a way for everything to line up evenly and like to fall in a nice way. So feel free to take your time and experiment with that on your own. Um, I'm just going to kind of copy this design and try to get the links the same as I had on here. So we'll simply just attach our jump rings to the chain and the chain to the stars. All right, guys, so while I work on this, I'm gonna let you guys do the same and I'll meet you back at the end whenever we're going to be attaching 
all of these things to our pendant, okay? So I have my little star charms ready, and as you can see, I'm just using the jump rings to attach it to the chains, and I'm using just a teeny tiny bit of chain. I think this one only has like three links, and then this one has like maybe two, two and a half times more than that, just so they'll fall in like a nice little cascading pattern. So for the bead, I did want to share with you guys how I wrap the wire around it to create a little loop for us to put it on the pendant. I'm just going to take a small piece. This is maybe just like two or three inches. And we are going to just stick it through the hole. Okay. And then just wrap both sides up. Okay. And you should be able to do this without pliers. It is a very soft wire. If you have trouble, you can try using your pliers too. But I'm just kind of bending it over this wire that I pulled straight up, okay? So this is the shorter end that I'm wrapping around. All right, and you don't have to do it the exact way I'm showing you. This is just the easiest way for me to give you guys an inside look without my big old fingers covering it up. Okay, so you're just basically wanting to wrap that short edge of the wire around. And we're gonna clip that off. Okay, give it a little pinch in to make sure that it's not gonna stick out and poke somebody. And now to create the little loop, we will be using our round nose pliers because this loop is gonna be teeny tiny. I'm just gonna bend it to one side and then make sure you're holding very gently with your pliers. This is a very thin and fragile wire and if you pinch too hard, you can actually cut the wire. So just don't take your stress out on your pliers. <laughs> be gentle and we're just gonna wrap that wire around to create a little loop. Okay, now to finish it, we're going to pinch flatly with our chain nose pliers. This will hold that loop into place, so whenever we wrap, we won't be pulling it any smaller than it already is. Let's just wrap it around two times. And then we will cut that wire off also. And then just like we did before, try to pinch that little edge in so it's not gonna get caught on anyone's clothes, okay? You can use your chain nose pliers to kind of like straighten that loop out so that it's facing the right way in case it did move around while we were doing that. So my goal for this one is after we attach the jump rings, because the jump rings are a bit too big to slide around this little swirl, I'm hoping that we will just be able to kind of hook this on and slide it around. Okay, so let's go ahead and add our little stars. We'll be attaching them right here to that little uh, curve. So for my swirl, the jump rings were too big to slide on the same way that we're going to slide the bead on. So I will have to open them up and put them back on. Remember to open jump rings. You always push them, the parts away. You don't actually expand them the other way, if that makes sense. <laughs> so I'm just going to slide that onto my wire. We need to make it a little bit bigger. Okay. And now what you can do, because this can be tricky, you can actually use your round nose pliers or if you have another set of chain nose pliers, that can work too. If you're limited with tools, we can make this work. We are going to clip that back into place. So there is the first one. Okay, I'll go ahead and open the second one, just like that. 
And also we're going to slide that on. And then the other option for closing these, as you can see, it's not working so well, would just be to pinch with the chain nose pliers. But because this is so slippery, it keeps wanting to get away from me. So we're gonna stick with the original idea of using two pliers to close these. Okay. Now that's hard to see from that angle. There you go. You can see that it is perfectly closed. Make sure that there's no teeny tiny gap that your, cane, that your chain can slip through. And now all we need to do is add that little bead. What we'll do, our loop should be the right size for us to just kind of get in here and do a little loop-de-loop -loop to wrap it around. So my hands aren't working anymore. There we go. All right, just get that into place. All right, give everything a good look to make sure everything's lining up. And then after you get everything situated, we are gonna come back and do the final step of just attaching this loop right here to the wire just above it to make sure everything is secure. All right, so the final step, we are just going to attach this wire right here to secure that last little bit of our pendant. So we can go ahead and just take a piece of weaving wire, just a couple inches should be fine. And I'm just going to go ahead and stick it under both of them. Just gonna fold that over to create like a little tail that I can hold on with my thumb. And that'll help me to pull this wire tight, to wrap it around these two wires and secure them. Okay, I'm gonna do that maybe three times. And then we'll attach it to one of the base wires and we'll call it a day. Remember, you can use your pliers for this because these wires can be really tricky to hold on to. All right, I like to make sure they're all squished nice and close together. Okay. So now I'm just going to feed one of these ends just around this base wire right here. It'll help create a bit more stability so that these wires don't kind of slide around. And also it just helps to lock the wire so there's less chance of it coming undone later on. Just feed it through. That one's feeling a little stuck. I always like to hold these wires right here just to make sure that there's no chance that I'm gonna pull too hard and then kind of make a weird bend in these wires, okay? All right, I'm just gonna do that one more time. You see, I'm just kind of feeding it through. And then I'm going to snip that off. All right, so this is okay. I can tell on my design that's really loose. So I'm just gonna add a bit more weaving wire to the back. Make sure to do a double check on your design to see if there's any parts that need to be a bit more secured before you wear this gorgeous necklace. All right, one last bit of weaving wire on the back. I'm using my little Q-tip tool because that is very tight against the stone. Boom, boom, boom. Then I'm just gonna wrap it around these two. 
We'll see if that fixes the problem. If not, we can always just connect it to the next wire up on the back. So due to the shape of this stone that is still a bit loose, I don't like that. So I'm just going to keep on working up. I know that doesn't create the prettiest back, but I'd much rather have a secure design for this. So I'm just wrapping the wire around the next one. And that way all of this is kind of connected together on the back and we won't have any risk of the design wanting to slide off of this little moon. And just like we did up here, I wrapped it around a few times. I'm just gonna bring it right back down to finish it on like one single wire right here. Wrapping it around three times and then hopefully we will be done. All right, making sure that I clip off as close as I can to that base wire so that the wire is not on top and poking us while we wear this necklace. test no sharp bits and yay all right so there we have it our own little obsidian moon necklace all right guys i hope this is the type of design you are looking for because i love doing whimsical designs on these types of moons i do help that you, i do hope that this guys that this helped you guys i can't even talk anymore <laughs> Um, but just let me know if you have any questions or if you'd like to see a different style with these moons. All right. Make sure to send me some pictures once you try this. All right, guys, I'll see you next time. Hey, everyone. Before you get rid of me, I just wanted to hop on here and do a little bit of troubleshooting and answer any questions that may come up. Because after I finished the tutorial, I did notice that this, this um, silver version was a bit looser than the gold version. And there could be multiple reasons for that. Um, first off, the silver wire that I use is a bit softer than this gold plated wire. And then another reason is, is that especially with these obsidian moons, the crystal shapes are always completely different. So with the obsidians, sometimes you get these really cool like edges that the wire can hook on. Um, sometimes the shapes are completely different. It, these work a lot better if you have a moon that has a nice angle right here. But I think the main thing that went wrong with mine is that while I was filming the tutorial, I wasn't able to kind of get the wire tight enough around the moon. So especially with this wire right here, you wanna make sure that this wire is really tight because that is what is gonna create a secure base for your design. So after I finished filming, I went back and I reinforced the back of it. So this is a technique that you can use if you find that your design is a bit loose. Um, while I was filming, I forgot to mention that it is really important to add a bit of weaving wire to secure these two wires right here at the top, okay? So you'll want to do that. And then you'll just go in and see if anything is loose. The gold one was fine, so I didn't really need to add anything extra here. But with the silver one, I noticed that the wires were kind of slipping off the stone a bit. So instead of redoing the whole wrap, I just went in with some more like 26 gauge weaving wire and I just secured the wires on the back. Okay, I know this isn't the prettiest way, but it does increase the security of your design and it helps prevent you from having to throw a design completely in the trash. If you had some trouble with the beginning of the tutorial where we're leaving a little gap here, just ignore that the first time that you're making this, you know, it's all right. Just focus on getting these wires wrapped around the stone as tightly as possible. And then from there, you can move on to adding the chains and stuff if you wanna do that the next time, okay? 
So I hope this helps answer any questions you have and solve any problems you might have had. If you have any others, just feel free to leave it in the comments below and I'll try my best to get back to you guys.